What's up YouTube, it's Zach here. And today I wanted to talk about disproving atheism. So first and foremost, I really don't care what religion someone is or what lack of religion someone is. However, I do feel in the same way that people feel that religions are cult-like or that people are born into a religion and you know they just kind of accept it, which, which would actually not be the way I was because there was definitely a, a big part of my life where I, I doubted religion um, as it is, which is a positive thing for me to help get to the other side that I am on now. Um, but, you know, it, the same applies towards atheism. You know, there's some people who are born into atheism. There's some people who are cult-like with it, who feel the need to, you know, kind of group together and then kind of talk crap about the other. Um, and so, you know, I'm prefacing it with that. But what is what is something that faith is based off of? Well, faith is based off of what? Faith. And so here I'm bringing in direct examples from the Quran, from the Bible as well, that predict future events and that also bring up scientific discoveries that were recently found out. Now, this isn't just my opinion. There's leading scientists who have been approached with these verses and said, there's no doubt, you know, and I quote, there's no doubt in my mind that Muhammad was receiving revelation directly from God. Um, so, you know, I wanted to just go right into it and start off with some um, predictions. Now, an interesting prediction um, is in the Quran. There's the prediction that the Romans would beat the Persians. Okay. Um, and what historically was going on was that the, um, the Persians defeated the Romans and the pagans at the time, you know, in Arabia were... were you know, kind of making fun of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and saying, like, you know, the believers lost, like, where's your God? Because the, the, the in the book, the Christians are considered the people, the believers, just like the Jews are, right? So really, there shouldn't be a lot of infighting between these groups. They're both people of the book. And so this verse was released, and it is um, chapter 30, chapter of the Romans, you know, verse 3, it starts at. And it says the Romans have been defeated in the land nearby, and they, after their defeat, will be victorious in a few years. Allah is, is the command before and after that. And on that day, the believers will rejoice. So it ended up being, you know, the term sum in Arabic, it, it essentially meant, meant, you know, it could mean up to, to nine years. And that's eventually when the Romans defeated the Persians um, against all odds. Um, it also said the believers would rejoice on that day. That was also the the day that the Muslims won in the battle of the battle of Badr. So it had kind of two meanings: the believers would rejoice. It was the the Romans would rejoice as well as the you know the Christians and the Muslims would rejoice that day. Next, I refer to the Bible, and this is in Daniel eleven, and it talks about the coming of Alexander the Great as well as the destruction of his empire, the Greek Empire. And it says, three more kings will arise in Persia, and then a fourth who will be far richer than all others. When he has gained power by his wealth, he will stir up everyone against the kingdom of Greece. So this actually happened. I mean, Alexander was really, the, Greece wasn't a unified place. They were fighting amongst each other. Alex was the only one who was able to get Greece together in order to fight the Persians. You know, then a mighty king will arise who will rule with great power and do as he pleases. That's, that's Alexander. After he has arisen, his empire will be broken up and parceled out towards the four winds of the heavens. It will not go to his descendants, nor will it have the power he exercised, because his empire will be uprooted and given to others. So first of all, Alexander didn't have descendants. Um, his empire was given to his generals, and it was essentially broken up into four different divisions. So, I mean, this, this couldn't be more specific. Again, this is Daniel 11, and that's from the Bible or the Torah. You know, same thing, really, the Old Testament. Um... Next, I wanted to bring up some scientific things. Um, and one of those things is um, regarding the seas um, in the Quran. This is 25, chapter 25, verse 53. It says, it is he who has released the two seas, one fresh, one sweet, and one salty, and one better, bitter. And he placed between them a barrier and prohibiting partition. So what is known in, you know, what is seen is that when salt water and fresh water mix, you know the, the two bodies of water mix they actually there's actually dividing essentially a partition a barrier between them although the thing is that's not that hard to understand or see or visualize because people can visualize it right but what is is that he um here's a different verse that talks about the same concept this chapter 55 
uh, verse 19 through 20, he has let free the two bodies of flowing water meeting together. Between them is a barrier which they do not transgress. Okay, so the concept that's big in here is that you can see, you know, an actual divide between fresh and salt water. But what was recently discovered was that, for example, when you have the Mediterranean and it goes off into the ocean, although they're both saline in nature, they're both salt water, they still don't mix either. They have different properties. One will have their own biome, their own bacteria, their own, you know, particles, you know, that are in there. So essentially, even when you have two salt waters that mix, they don't come, you have to, you, visually they might look like they're mixed together, but when you take samples, you know, under microscope and testing, they actually aren't the same. And that's something that can't be visualized. So that's a little bit more unique. Um, the next one I wanted to bring up is the concept of clouds and the producing of rainwater. And in the Quran, it says, have you not seen how God makes the clouds move gently, then joins them together, then makes them into a stack, and then you see the rain come out of it. This is, this is uh, chapter 24, verse 43. Now, literally the concept that we use in to describe you know, how rain is formed is the concept of cloud stacking. So essentially what happens is when the clouds get together, they keep le legitimately stacking, and when the moisture content gets high enough, that's when the, um, you know, when they get high enough and it's colder up there, you know, that's essentially when the, the rain starts to fall. So it's an interesting concept. I mean, it's quite literally stacking. Um, another interesting concept is the, the creation. We made everything out of water. The fact that all living things have water in there. Obviously, they have other components in there, but water is a major component of all living things. Um, that's why we need to drink it. And it says, we made in the Quran, uh, chapter 21, verse 30, it says, we made every living thing from water. Will they not believe? Now, you got to understand, this is ancient Arabia. This is an isolated community. Um, this was taught by a man who was uneducated, untraveled, essentially illiterate, speaking this, you know. Another big one is, the well, quite literally big, is the Big Bang Theory. Well, this is in chapter 21, verse 30. And um, it says, have those who disbelieve not considered that the heavens and the earth were a joint entity and we separated them? And so, um, you know, there's the concept of, uh, you know, the Big Bang Theory, which was something that, you know, was was proven basically by Arnaud um, Benzias in 1965. And it's the concept that um, essentially the universe at one point, everything was just one and then i mean essentially it just banged it i mean it literally expanded it exploded and, and that's what kind of created all the universes and the things in space we see um to, to you know to counter that it also talks about the um the big crunch theory um and in quran verse 21 uh chapter i mean chapter 21 verse 104 it says the day when we fold the heavens like the folding of a written sheet for the records you know, basically as we fold the heavens like a piece of paper and we begin the first creation, we will repeat it. That is a promise binding upon us. Indeed, we will do it. So essentially it talks about that. God is saying that in the end of the, the times, the earth will be folded up like a sheet of paper. And now, you know, the break, the big crunch theory, which is based on uh, Einstein's theory of relativity, is the concept that when essentially the universe will end is when it essentially implodes on itself in the same way it exploded it will implode and this is what the quran is referencing now in um, chapter 23 verses 12 through 14 it says we created man from so it talks about embryology you know the creation of humans and and, and how an embryo looks now this is very interesting because they didn't have mris they didn't have stuff like that but basically it says um we made man from an extract extract of clay now, what are also we made out of in reference to water? What else are we also made out of? We're also made out of, you know, carbon. I mean, that's a, that's a huge thing of what all living things are made out of, where we're carbon based. And, and that's essentially what clay is. You know, I mean, that's kind of what we are. And um, so it says we created man from an extract of clay. We made him as a drop in place of a settlement in a place of a settlement. We made the drop, which essentially in Arabic, it says alika. Uh, which kind of means suspended thing, blood clot. And we made the alika into a mudgach. Mudgach, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it, which basically means chewed substance. And so, you know, what, we're getting a, big, a couple of big concepts here. First, it says that the creation of the embryo is a drop, 
right? And it's placed in, uh, you know, in this case, the, the uterus of a woman. Um, then we made the drop into what looks like a leech. And if you look at early embryos, they do look like a leech. And then it kind of starts to look like a chewed substance. Now, Professor M. M. Ritas Keith L. Moore was basically, he's one of the leading scientists in the fields of anatomy and embryology. And um, he basically was shown this verse and what his exact words are, it is clear to me that these uh, statements of, must have come to Muhammad from God because almost all of this knowledge was not discovered until many centuries later. So this is a scientist also affirming that, okay, this is legit, you know, and maybe he's Muslim, maybe he's not religious, I don't know, but he's just saying that for someone to say something like this, it has to be from God. And this is the leading scientist. He's not some random YouTuber who just wants to insert his opinion and be like, well, I don't believe in God, so you all must not believe in God. You know, because there's people who are open-minded. There's people who have their beliefs set and they don't care what is presented to them. Um, so, you know, my video is not for people who have their mindset who don't care what's presented for them. It's for people who are on the fence and genuinely want to learn. Okay, and so now it says this guy's protection. And this is in chapter 21, verse 32. And God says, and we made the sky in a protected ceiling, but they from its signs are turning away. So what does it mean about protected ceiling? You know, we know about the ozone layer. We know about how all the gases on earth are protecting us from um, the harmful rays of the sun. You know, that's why th that's a big problem that's happening right, right now when it's coming to global warmings and everything like that. Um, well, you know, we're, we're destroying the atmosphere and so we're losing that protection. But how would people know there's protection in the sky? I mean, nobody, nobody grows, unless you learn that in school, you're not going to know that by yourself. And then also in um, chapter 57, verse uh, 25, it says, We sent down iron with its great inherent strength and its many benefits for humankind. Now, a scientist by the name of M.E. Walworth claims that iron is not natural to the earth. So, and this is not just him. Many scientists believe that billions of years ago, the iron came from meteorites. So it could be taken quite literally. We sent down iron, you know, we sent it down, literally sent it down. And now we're going to go into the, the sun moving in orbit. This is chapter 21, verse 33. And it says, it is he who created the night and the day and the sun and the moon. All heavenly bodies in an orbit are swimming. Now, you know, there were, there were astronomers who believed in orbit. There were many who didn't believe in orbit. But this is coming, you know, very straightforward and saying it was an orbit. And again, this, is, this isn't a, a long time ago um, in a somewhat isolated, you know, society. Because again, the Muslim Empire, just like the Roman and Greek Empire, the Muslim em Empire is a continuation of the Greek Empire and the Roman Empire. They're all the same. But essentially, before those people were united, they didn't have many scientific discoveries. That's why the more humanity today even is united, the greater humanity will become because through un unification, we have um, excellence. Um, now we're going to talk about, this is a huge one, the mountains as stakes. And so this is in uh, chapter 78, verses 6 through 7, and it says, Have we not made the earth a resting place and the mountains as stakes? And so there's a ge geophysicist by the name of Frank Press, and he, in 1986, he explains how mountains are like stakes and that essentially they're, you know, they're, you have tectonic plates or the ground is constantly moving. Essentially, you know, for when, you, when you have a mountain such as Mount Everest, um, it's nine kilometers above the surface of the earth, but actually it's 125 kilometers below. So more of a mountain is below than above the surface. That's something people don't know. And so the reason, you know, what what this geophysicist basically, you know, and geophysicists aside from him, all of them basically have come to the conclusion as, is that through these mountains being deep, it acts as a stabilizing force for the earth. And now we're going to talk about the expansion of the universe. Um, essentially, the Quran also says, um, you know, we are its expanders. You know, the, the Quran, it cut off the where it's located, but obviously we have Google, thank God. So, yeah, well, thank God, literally. But, um, you know, it's a, the, in the Quran, it says we are in, we are its expanders in regard to the heavens. And so it is a known fact that their, their universe is constantly expanding. Next, the concept of pain receptors. This is in um, verse, or excuse me, this is in chapter four, verse 56. And it says, we shall send those who reject our revelations to the hellfire when their skins have been burned away. We shall replace them with new ones so that they may continue to feel pain. And so it was long thought that the pain receptors were located in the brain. 
which is true. However, the receptors essentially are present in the skin. And if the skin is burned off, an individual doesn't feel something. You know, sometimes when people get shot, it kind of burns the nerves and they don't even feel it. Um, now, this is an interesting one. When you when there's waves in the sea or ocean or whatever, we just think of the waves on the surface. But the interesting thing is the waves on the surface might be going here. The waves on the bottom might go here. Might be some going here. So there's essentially waves going all different directions. Um, and in the Quran, in verse um, 40 of chapter 24, it says... Or they are like darkness with an unfathomable sea, within an unfathomable sea, which is covered by waves upon which are waves. So waves upon which are waves. I mean, that might not make sense. I mean, you're saying, what, what's going on? But, you know, recently we figured out that there's waves going in many directions. Another interesting one, as it says, this is in Quran, um, this is in verse 15 through 16, chapter 96. It says, no, indeed, if he does not stop, we will seize him by his forehead. He, his lying, sinful forehead. Now this is about Abu Jahad. Abu Jahad. And this is this is this was basically a, a pagan he was a tribal leader, he was pagan, and he um he you know he 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 kind of voices uh he didn't like the religion, he didn't like Islam. And, and now this verse says, We will seize him by his by the forehead, his lying sinful forehead. Now why why the forehead and why would they say you know, why would God say his lying sinful forehead? Well, because what we know now is that the part of the brain that has to do with lying or coming up with a lie, like com complex tax tasks like that, it has to do with the frontal lobe. And so that's obviously located in the forehead. So it's interesting to hear that, you know, specifically. Now, you know, just how to assess all of this, basically another thing that I wanted to bring up too is the string theory. You know, you could say quantum physics. Quantum physics are essentially dealing with a lot of theoretical, but the, the concept of other dimensions, you know, and that's what string theory has come down to. Now, this string theory is the concept that where when you go down past atoms and electrons and neutrons, I mean, when you keep going down, 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 you know, smaller, 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 essentially you, you see rings of energy that are strings. And now the concept of this existing has been mathematically proven. You know, the math is sound. Um, and, but through the math being sound, it has to take an equation that there's multiple different dimensions. And so the concept of different dimensions can prove a lot of what religion is talking about because it's basically saying that not everything that you see is what's there, right? We, in, and another concept is the, the concept of intelligent design. Um, it's recently figured out that bacteria, the way it works and moves, it actually has a motor in it. It has a clutch and it, and, and it does things that there's a concept in spirituality called as above, so below, which means what is happens in the heavenly realms is kind of like what happens in the humanly realms. There's there's a connect between those two things. And so it's interesting that humans as a whole, we've invented through the power of God, we've invented engines, but yet God already produced engines in bacteria. So it's it's almost like we're just already emulating what already exists. Um, you know, the, the concept of intelligent design is, is just that basically the way... The, the way our process works and the, the world works around us is that there would have to be essentially an intelligent designer behind it all. Um, the concept of energy is neither created nor destroyed um, has to be that in order for laws to even be put in place, the laws that we follow, for even that energy, since it can't be destroyed nor created, to, to exist in, in the cycle that it exists in, it would have to have a starting point. Um, so essentially science and religion are not separate things. Um, I mean, as far as predicting the future, as far as predicting, predicting Alexander the Great and Darius, and then what would happen with Alexander's empire. And then the fact that it wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't pass it on to his descendants and that it would be split up into specifically four. The concept of the Quran predicted that the Romans would defeat the pagans and the Persians in this case. And then on that same day, the, the, the it was it also said the Muslims would defeat the pagans as well, the Mus the, the other Arab pagans. Um, it's just interesting. I mean, it's predicting the future in two instances, and those are just the instances instances that are brought up. So now there's a lot of scientific, you know, explanations, and then obviously people in the comments will doubt it who are atheists or you know whatever, but it's also scientists who are leading in these fields saying, okay, this is accurate. Like whoever. It said this was getting it from God. 
um, and they're more qualified than anybody who's going to be in the comments. Um, again, I don't care if someone's atheist. I don't, you know, I don't care what religion you are. My job is just simply to pose what's in there and give it to people because most people won't ever pick up the Quran. They won't ever pick up any sort of religious text. And if they do pick up, you know, the Quran, they're just going to, you know, find what they want to find to make it look bad and to contradict itself and whatever. They won't actually sit down with an open mind and read it all the way. And you'll find a lot of interesting facts in there. You find a lot of interesting, you know, scientific discoveries. And, um, this isn't anything that could come from man, quite frankly, especially at the time. So thank you for watching my video. If you got any comments, please leave them below. Thank you.